co-defendant David Schaefer in the Trump RICO trial is fighting to let more evidence come in. On Tuesday of this week, the district attorney's office filed a five-page response with the Fulton County Superior Court, arguing that, hey, those two new proposed witnesses, Manny Aurora and Cindy Yeager, shouldn't be allowed to come in. The gist of this filing is, hey, we think that this is a thinly veiled attempt to request the reopening of evidence. This court, under Judge McAfee, said, hey, March 1st, evidence is closed. (laughs) And now we have two separate motions trying to introduce two new witnesses. They set a bunch of case law here to demonstrate that, you know, without doing this in a timely manner, it's not excusable. So importantly, we get some other information being alleged by the state about the motives of these two witnesses. So this I'm going to read in full. Clearly, in the case at hand, there is no legitimate excuse as to the untimeliness of the proposed testimony submitted by defendants. They are nothing more than additional examples of defendants' attempts to belabor focus on irrelevant and collateral matters, despite extensive hearings covering them. The proposed testimony may also be seen as an attempt to try this case in the public eye and further prejudice, embarrass, and harass the district attorney using inadmissible and incredible assertions motivated by personal and political gain. As the notice plainly indicates, both Attorney Yeager and Attorney Aurora had knowledge of the alleged information claimed to be relevant to the motion to disqualify since as early as September of 2023. So, why didn't it come in sooner? It is only now before this, this court, with no explanation in either proposal for the delays. Additionally, the motive and credibility of these, these proposed witnesses is questionable in substance and timing. Attorney Aurora represented Defendant Kenneth John Chesebro in this case, who pled guilty to a serious felony offense stemming from this indictment. Attorney Aurora recently publicly stated in the New Yorker magazine, published on February 14, 2024, that he had, and so by the close of evidence, that was like two weeks previous <laughs> for the March 1st evidence close. He said that, that he had knowledge of the allegations behind Defendant Roman's motion to disqualify as early as fall 2023, but he never brought them to the court's attention, and he advised his client to enter a felony guilty plea. Attorney Yeager is employed as a second-in-command to Cobb County District Attorney Flynn Brody, whose re-election is currently being challenged by a Deputy District Attorney of the Fulton County DA's office. Uh-oh. The timing of Attorney Yeager's proposed testimony is not coincidental. Neither of these proposed witnesses ever testified at any of the hearings in this matter, despite counsel for Defendant Schaefer and Defendant Latham having every opportunity to speak with them, subpoena them, and question them before the court while the evidence was still open. At best, the last-minute self-serving barrage, disguised as a notice of proposed testimony, is cumulative, impermissible hearsay under OCGA, as they are clearly attempts by the defendants to bypass the rules of evidence as it relates to the use of extrinsic evidence for a prior inconsistent statement. Now, my only one rebuttal is for the defendant who pled out, right? You can't you can't argue like, hey, they knew about it. So the co-defendants are kind of separate in a way. So if another co-defendant didn't know about it and they uniquely discover it at a newer time, there might be some gray area there. But we're also finding out that these other defendants, Defendant Schaefer and Defendant Lethem, also both had prior knowledge earlier on than, you know, this March 1st close. But this wasn't brought to their attention. They didn't bring this to the court's attention. So could be a big problem. So to close this motion out, the state is asking, hey, can you make a pretrial order striking the clerk's record from the clerk's record? This proposed testimony of Cindy Yeager. Get it off the record. Do the same for the proposed testimony of Manny Aurora. And also deny the defense counsel's request to reopen evidence. So that was again submitted on the 5th. That was Tuesday that just passed. If we hop over to David Schaefer's response, we can get a look at the counterargument that they're going to make. So defendant David J. Schaefer's reply in support of reopening evidence and opposition to state's motion to strike proposed testimony. Now, this is actually what I saw first. And I was like, oh, God, they want to bring us more. (laughs) They want to bring us more. What did Judge McAfee say about, you know, he said two weeks, two Fridays ago now. So we are less than seven days away from when he wanted to come back with the decision and they're fighting over evidence coming in, new evidence coming in. So So defendant David J. Schaefer respectfully files his reply in support of reopening evidence and opposition to state's motion to strike proposed testimony, replying to and opposing the state's response in opposition to reopening evidence and motion to strike the proposed testimony of Cindy and Manny. The prosecution objects to the defense request to open the evidence relating to the defendant's motion to disqualify the DA and Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade in order to present the testimony of Cindy Yeager, 
a co-deputy chief assistant district attorney with the Cobb County District Attorney's Office, and attorney Manny Aurora, counsel for defendant Kenneth Chesbro. And here's where we get the why. The irony of the staff of one of the district attorney's office objecting to a member of another district attorney's office prepared to come forward and testify regarding the disqualification of a district attorney should not be lost on the court. In other words, this is a longer way to say it's laughable. We're saying that it's laughable. The state's opposition to the testimony of Ms. Yeager and Mr. Aurora is particularly perplexing in light of the fact that the prosecution itself had requested that this court accept an affidavit not sworn under penalty of perjury for Mr. Herbert Brody, a wine salesperson, or, in the event that the court declined to accept Mr. Brody's affidavit, requested that Mr. Brody be permitted to testify. See Notice of Filing State's Proposed Supplemental Exhibit 1 to the hearing on defendant's motion to dismiss and disqualify. In making its request to present the testimony of Mr. Brody, the prosecution cited no alleged standards relating to finality or failure to present evidence in a timely manner. The object of all legal investigation is the discovery of truth. It is this high goal that must govern and color all evidentiary and procedural rulings by a trial court. The court possesses the authority to schedule, as it deems appropriate, pretrial conferences to hear motions, demurs, and pleas. Moreover, it has control over the presentation of evidence for purposes of the ascertainment of truth. The defendants have presented evidence to support a finding that the district attorney and special prosecutor Wade possess conflicts of interest, have knowingly engaged in a pattern of forensic misconduct, and have engaged in a misconduct in relation to this case. The district attorney's conduct has created a clear appearance of impropriety, which should not be permitted to undermine public trust in the impartiality of these proceedings and the administration of justice. In the interest of the ascertainment of the truth relating to the serious issues of prosecutorial misconduct raised by the defense, the court should decline to strike the proposed testimony of Attorney Yeager and Mr. Aurora, and should reopen the evidence to hear and consider their testimony. Respectfully submitted on March 8th, so that was yesterday. That's Attorney Craig Gillen here. And what I thought was interesting about this is the debate is over those two, two witness testimony affidavits. I'm pretty sure that the winery witness that they're citing here I believe he was proffered on the same day that closing arguments were delivered. But Cindy Yeager and Manny Aurora, the news about them coming forward is, you know, they had some affidavits and they were willing to come forward. Those filings, that happened after closing arguments. So there's a small difference there, right? If something was already proffered before closing arguments started, I think it's a little bit more favorable of a timeline for it to be admissible. And again, that piece of evidence was, it was a guy from a winery saying, hey, they paid me in cash for a $400 bottle of wine. So that's what that's referencing. But these two other witnesses, the, the filings for them came forward after closing arguments. So I know that's like a small difference in time, but technically the court said March 1st, closing the gates to new evidence. On the flip side, I wonder if it makes a difference that there's multiple co-defendants. And even though one or two of the co-defendants may have known that you know, Cindy Yeager may have had something, some type of knowledge. If others didn't know that, they wouldn't have had the chance or knowledge to subpoena them until they became aware of it. So does that change the game at all? So we had a five-page document and a four-page document and a couple food for thought questions just from that little bit. Um, but let me know what you think. Uh, me, personally, all I'm thinking is Judge McAfee, he said, I'm, I'm going to think about this for two weeks. And here we are arguing back and forth about more evidence and should it come in. So let me know what you think. The floor is yours.